It's your boy. All right, everybody, welcome to the podcast. I'm so excited today. I've got uh, my guest, DJ K Moore, here. Uh, we are going to be talking about all things music. He's a DJ, both here on Twitch and a fellow streamer, um, and in the Dallas, uh, Texas area. Uh, we're going to get into, you know, how he got into music, how he uh, got into streaming and, you know, his insights, his journey, uh, maybe some advice that he's got for anybody who's interested in getting into the same thing, uh, what he's doing, what he's all about, stuff that he's uh, involved in, how you can get connected to him and uh, so forth. So thank you so much for joining me, DJ Kmore. Uh, welcome. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, so, yeah, we're just going to jump right into it. Um, tell me, uh, we'll we'll start around like high school because I kind of feel like high school is when we are starting to get like a really good sense of like at least the direction we want to go or we're understanding more of who we are and we're kind of like it's where our hobbies and our interests and our passions start to crop up. So like what did high school or at least maybe like your teen years, what did that look like for you? Is that when you got interested in music? Uh, streaming, I don't believe was, but it wasn't a not thing yet. Oh, I'm 32, <laughs> so definitely streaming was not around at that time. <laughs> my high school time. Um, no, nah, um, in high school, man, I was really into sports. That's the wild thing about it. Like, I, I was, I was, I loved music. I've always loved music. Um, music has always been something that's always been in my family. Like, we just, I don't know, was, nobody really made music, but we just always danced and listened to music all the time it was the weirdest thing so i'd always known about a lot of music right but whenever i was in like middle school i used to sing in a church choir and so that's when i started learning about how songs are like made like in schemes i guess if that's what you want to say like how you have like okay you have the chorus you know then the verse and then you you know what i'm saying that's when i first learned about it but in high school i actually started singing in the show choir oh um, nice uh, at Arlington Heights High School um, okay. in, in Fort Worth. And uh, that was like my first introduction into like, you know, notes and all of that kind of stuff, right? Um, can't sing like that now, smoked a lot of cigarettes and other things. <laughs> like, yeah. But um, definitely, um, definitely that was like, I would say like my first real music experience, like really know, like into like a kind of, semi-professional type type of deal you know what I mean nice okay mm -hmm. so high school's over uh you know what does your journey look like from there uh so you start with choir and um mm -hmm. do, do you branch more out into like the music scene or do you start working or yeah what does that look like after you know after your high school years yeah well after after high school I go to college at that point right so okay. college college i'm just going to college just for um just for you know academics um but doing a lot of partying right so yeah. I'm, I'm i'm meet like you know i'm at i'm at a lot of the parties where there's different djs and i'm learning and i'm looking and i'm i'm like wow like dang like i know i could do that like if i really just had the money to like buy the gear and shit you know what i mean yeah like, so um that was kind of like my college was more like my when it comes to DJing was more like my observing time. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I was in Beaumont, like Beaumont, yeah. Texas. Like nobody fucking goes to Beaumont. Yeah. You, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So because of that, uh, but there was a lot of people from Houston okay. that that went to school there. So it was a lot of like 
I got a I got a feel for a lot of like Houston music that I didn't know anything about that I wouldn't you know it's just like you know stuff that only they would know about you know what I'm saying right. you know what I'm so um that was that was that step into that so I would say like college those four years in college I just observed those DJs and and learned how you know they moved I learned mannerisms you know what I mean yeah so, and kind of like how they shaped the party i kind of like how people can kind of feel whenever i'm elevating the party every hour now that's how i learned that from them like okay i see how in the beginning of the day in the beginning of the night it's kind of like chill throwback ish and then you know you get into other stuff when it gets later you know but i i learned how the flow of the night works with just through watching them and partying for four years yeah not even, not even realizing that i was going to take it this serious though honestly yeah, that is something that you know when you've got a good DJ, when you kind of like, I call it like riding the wave of the night, you know, you start with one vibe, you kind of have this like, this height and like, and you, you know, it's good when like everybody is feeling it together, you know, yeah. it, it there isn't any division or people having different experiences. It's like, it's a collective experience and it is like, it's wonderful. So I, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. And there have been times where I'm like, wow, it almost feels like, <laughs> it almost feels magical, you know? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Nice. Nice. So, um, let's see. So how, let's connect that to like how you got to where you are. So that, that was probably about, um maybe like eight uh eight nine years ago or something like that maybe 10. yeah, well, yeah. so yeah i got out of college summer of 2011 so it's about okay. 10, yeah, 10 years since i've been in college okay so a lot happens in 10 years right and you're like in beaumont and you're like you're learning this stuff you're learning you're like oh this is cool like i'm feeling this i love this i want to get into this i love music like what does that journey look like uh you know from your time in college and kind of observing to to like where you are now um okay so basically um get out of college i have a finance degree um and at the time for like a year i couldn't get like a job that correlated with the degree like even going to a bank like i couldn't get hired on at that bank also i want to shout out to wells fargo fuck y'all they 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 uh i found out they sent a letter to my house um to my dad's house like maybe like two or three months ago they discriminated on uh Every single black person that came there and tried to get a job, they discriminated and didn't hire us. Really? So now, yes. And so there's a lawsuit. You can look that shit up. It's Whoa. They paid us $200. So I had to get that. Mm. But because of that, I was like, man, you know what? My mom got me a job at the um, the police auto pound lot. And I was like, fuck it, man. Like, if this is what I'm going to be doing for a little bit, I might as well pick up something that I just really been feeling and it's something that I've really been one to do. So I just bought me like a little cheap $200 turntable or controller or whatever. And man, it was just like, my hands just knew exactly what to do. It nice. was just like, I, nobody had taught me anything. I was just, it was just, okay, this is press play. Boom. Okay. What does this do? And it all just started flowing. Um, and the first time that I really felt like, okay, maybe I should really take this a little serious. Um, my friend Fella, he brought over the guy that actually MCs for me now. His name is Tavon, but he's a rapper as well. But he came over and uh, to my house. He brought him over to my house and he was listening to me. He was like, bro, how long you been DJing? I was like, like, bro, like three or four months. And he was like, dog, you're great. Like, come holler at me in like a couple more months. We're going to see how far you are from there. Nice. And so at that point, at that point, I was living in Fort Worth and then I moved to Dallas. Dallas... I just started meeting people left and right. And <clears throat> excuse me, I just started meeting people left and right and um eventually found my way into uh DJing a showcase. DJ the showcase and then actually talked to the bar the uh the 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 uh booking manager there for the bar at Crown and Heart. I don't know if you Yeah, uh, yeah, you, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um and she booked me for like the next week and then after that next week I was booked regularly. Nice. Uh, I held that down for a year and then I started getting like other gigs, right? And so this is around like 2000, 2014, something like that. And then 2015 hits 
and I'm finally starting to get uh, no, 2016 hits, and I'm start uh, finally starting to get calls for um, Deep Ellum. And oh, nice. so once it opens up for Deep through Deep Ellum, then that I think 2000, 2018 or 2019 that would be my best year of DJing so far. And the reason why I say that is because I I DJed so many different gigs. I traveled and DJed, um, and I, that was the, those were the years where I started my first like real residencies, nice. and it's just been it's been great since awesome. then. I mean, corporate gigs, bars, weddings, um, if you name it, an event I've probably done it. Nice. So, yeah. Nice. What's up, uh, Kuma? Welcome to the stream. Glad you're here. <laughs> He's giving you a shout out. Uh, so okay. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what, um, what are your favorite events to, to, to DJ now? So, you know, you get all this experience and for people who don't know, Deep Ellum is like, uh, like the party area in Dallas. It's major. If you get in there, you kind of like all these doors open. And like you said, you got all this experience. You did all kinds of different things. Are you kind of like in a position now where you get to cherry pick? And if so, what do you like, what do you love uh, what events do you love to do? I, I'll say that first, and then I'll, and I'll follow up with something. Um, what I love to do the most. Ooh, uh oh, drop my phone. What I love to do the most. I love to do underground, and when I mean underground, meaning like BYOB, somebody rented out like a some kind of I don't know some kind of warehouse or something like that, or. Just something that's not really official, not a bar. Yeah. But we have, you know, we, you know, we have everything we need. You have bring your weed, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I have the free reign to play whatever I want to. Nice. That is that is my favorite kind. If I get paid as well, that is especially my favorite <laughs> kind, right? <laughs> yeah. But if, even if not, those are my favorite kinds because I I can um um I can I can create a vibe that really fits to how I am feeling. It's yeah. not, and, and I mean, of course I'm still reading the room, right? But at the same time, I am, I'm locked in a zone that nobody can get me out of. Yeah. So, right now, whenever it comes to, a, whenever it comes to bars and clubs though, I hate clubs. I so hate is, is it because they tell you what to play? Are they like, yes, is really? That, I am like, I can't believe that when I'm in a club, it, like, I just automatically think, oh, this per they brought this person here because of their style, because that's what they want out of them, not to, like, have a cookie cutter. Well, it's that, and it's also, uh, it's that, and it's also uh, the fact they're, they're social, they're, at this point right now, their social background, right? So how many people are you actually pulling in this mug? You know what I'm saying? If you, okay. I put you on this flyer or whatever, how many people are going to be showing up just because you're the DJ? You know what I'm saying? So that's number one. But the the second thing is, of course, are you going to play the shit that everybody wants to hear? Mm. And the the third thing that I don't, well, the, the, the number one thing I don't like, you know, though, about the club is the culture, right? Because, I mean, at the end of the day, at the bar, we have to play what people want to hear, too, right? We have to mm. play the stuff that really is going to make them go to the bar and spend money and stay. But the bar, the the bar culture and the club culture is so totally different because I can give me, I'll go to the bar all, all night and give me a four dollar well, all night. Yeah, I'm not gonna sit up here and spend three hundred dollars <laughs> on yeah. a bar. Yeah, um, Hennessy or whatever that I can go to the liquor store and get for forty dollars, pay to get in and pay to sit in this section. Like, right. To stand around and just look at people. Like, it's just even... a display of money. Like, that's all it is. There is nothing, like, yeah. And, and in my opinion, and in my opinion, that is the problem with America. Mm -hmm. That is the problem with America is that we are more focused on being able to show people I got money rather than putting money in towards the right things. Yeah, yeah, and, agreed. And in, my, and in my opinion, it's just like, dang, bro, like, I'm not hating on the promoters at all because they're doing what anybody is, is – somebody has to do it yeah. so i understand it i understand it make your money but for me as a dj i don't want to i don't like that 
that whole focus on bottle service and stuff like that. I want the focus to be on the music. I want my music, my I want people to, yes, I'm I'm making people drink and stuff, but I want it to be, hey, this guy makes transitions that are crazy, that make sense, and they keep the party going. Yeah. Like that's that's what I want the reason for me to be booked for. Yeah. So when when you were uh, when you got into Deep Element, you were doing all kinds of different events. Do you remember like uh, like one event? Like we all have this thing like when we're at the beginning of our journeys, and uh, it, there's there's like an event that you do where you're like, wow, like I may never do that again because I was in the beginning of my career, but it was just amazing, uh, like a really unique ground level experience or a, a positive one or or did was the better stuff like later on um let me see let me think no i'll give you one party that i did so now now what, what i do i have a, a a island like like dance hall night that i call bashment party that's what i do now nice but before nice. then at crowning heart you know upstairs crowning heart was like you know, they had the bar, but it was like the dance floor where the DJ and stuff was. Like it was mad, like hole in the wall ish type of you know ordeal, right? So I love that. I love that aesthetic about Crown of Heart. So back then, I used to throw these parties called Wine Up, Wine Up Your Body Saturdays. Okay. And I would play nothing but dance hall, just straight dance hall music. And the first time I did that, I packed it out. People were trying to come upstairs; they couldn't get upstairs. And it was just like one of those moments, like, wow, like I can, they, this was before I was really throwing my own events and I was renting out venues. Like, like, it was just like, it was just like, dang, like, this is something, number one, this isn't my natural culture. I'm not Jamaican. I'm not, I'm not African, like, I'm, you know, immediate descent like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, so for me, I'm like, holy crap, like you, dog, you might be able to reach the people that you need to just with the music. And of course, you know, you have to be yourself and you have to show some kind of personality, but that made me feel good to say like, okay, bro, like people are paying attention to what you're doing and now's the time to go ahead and attack it. Yeah. And I think that was really like my takeoff time. It was just like, okay, now he's got his feet up underneath him. People know him from this party. Now he's, now let's, let's see what else he can do. Yeah. So, yeah. So how has your connection with music changed from your times, you know, where you were gravitating towards it with, uh, you know, choir and stuff uh, to mm -hmm. where you are now? Has it been the same or has it has it uh, changed or, uh, you know, how? Oh, thanks for hosting, Kuma. Thanks for that. Um, what a. How has your relationship with music changed over time? And, you know, what is it that's really driven you to like stick with it? um yo like the number one thing for me is like wanting to be able to uh live off of my passion but also like i don't want to have to have a boss like i want to be my own boss <laughs> and honestly like that's right now that is right now that is my driving passion like my driving force with this because like I see what I do, like I'm a payroll admin for Ernst & Young and I make good money, right? But before this pandemic, like I was making great money with DJing. I was DJing almost every night. And, you know, it was it was like God, the pandemic hit. And it was just like, what is the sound that happens whenever Mario gets hit by something? It's like, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah, I felt like I was just on this wave and it was just like, oh, and it was just like, okay, here we go back again. You have to figure out how to maneuver and whatever. And, you know, I think I have more of a, more of an appreciation for, I definitely have more of an appreciation for being able to go out and DJ, right? Yeah. Like in front of everybody and, and, you know, being able to tell somebody, you know, okay, I'll take your requests. Like actually I might take a request or two now because it's like, okay, I'm out. Like we got no, we here, you know what I'm saying? Like, I might as well go ahead and show the love, whatever, you know? So I think that it's more of a, you know, of course now it's more of a, there's more of a financial thing in it, but I think 
it's more I'm I'm more passionate about it now than I was back then because now I, I want to play the right music. I don't want to just play the music that people want to hear. I yeah. want to play the right the right music that should be played in the right timing, but also like for like the, the soul or for the the vibe that I'm trying to create. Like that's what I want to play. I don't want to play if I I ain't never shot a gun in my life. So my trap has definitely dwindled down. Like I don't do all of that anymore. You know what I'm saying? So it's just not a passion for me to 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 play that kind of music now. Now it's just more so like, yo, I just want good vibes. Like I yeah. want good vibes in this music at, at all times. So yeah, that's I would say that's where my stance is with music now. So what can they expect from, you know, if they were to go to one of your events or if they were to tap in, you know, online, what is a, uh, what's a, what, what's your, what's your flavor? What's your style? What do you bring in? What can people expect? So if you're coming out to see me, it's just depending on the event, honestly, because if whoever's booking me sometimes will ask me like, yo, just play top 40 stuff. Don't play, don't, uh. go deep in, don't go deep into your bag. Just play the stuff they know. All right. Or if it's a throwback event, you know what I'm saying? It, I'll be playing throwbacks all night, right? Okay. If it's my event where I'm just curating shit, like my Twitch. Yeah. Like, like it, that also depends on the night because, like, last night I have Thursday Smackdown, right? Thursday night Smackdown. I Which play, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I play wrestling videos. Right. And I play a lot of trap music, just high, high energy rap, a lot of bass, a lot of violent type stuff. Like that's where you're going to get that at. Right. Mm -hmm. But any other day, like a Wednesday or a Monday or even Tuesday, whenever I play Shake and Bake with Junk Food, it's just really like, honestly, like a lot of movement. You're going to be, you're going to, your body's going to automatically move. Like that's, Either, it's either going to be your head or it's going to be your shoulders. It's going to be something, something. So that's one thing to expect. Another thing to expect is transitions that either maybe you have heard somebody make this transition before because it just makes sense that all DJs make this transition. Mm. But for the most part, <laughs> for the most part, different transitions, transitions that you never heard, um, and genre flipping. So going from dance hall to booty music to you know, a little R and B, playing some house music, whatever, Afro beats. I'm I'm a person that loves to grab from every every single different kind of jar and make a crazy salad. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what you would that's what to expect if I have the full reins to it. What is to you, uh not just for you, but be interesting to hear what you think about when you're listening to other DJs. Uh, what to you is like the art of DJing and how do you appreciate that in other people who are different from you and what you do? Oh, it's, it's people who are able to keep the party moving no matter what. Okay. No, no matter what. Yeah. So, you know, there's some DJs that, there's some DJs that don't know that maybe they don't know or they just don't care to make transitions. Mm. But but they're, you know, they'll scratch it up real quick and then they'll talk on the mic and they'll say they're 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 they are MCs themselves, right? So sometimes they don't even make transitions, but the party continues to flow. Mm. And so I can appreciate that. Uh, but for the most part, whenever I'm going to say, I'm, if I'm going to big up a DJ, it's the fact that they are creative, like you said. And when I say creative, meaning like, you know, they're going to have some loops that, you know, that, you know, may flip into something or their transitions are, are super smooth or, um, or they're playing music that I wouldn't expect for them to be playing, something like that. You know what I mean? But that, in my opinion, a creative DJ, a DJ who is not scared to try something new, um, and really just a DJ that knows how to read a crowd and read whenever they are losing a crowd. Those are the, those are the, the characteristics of a good DJ. In my opinion. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Cool. Yeah. Uh, when did you start streaming on Twitch? How long ago was that? Yeah, I was like, mm, I want to say it was like May or June. 
May, no, it was like April, April or May of last year. That was when I first like literally started streaming. Okay, yeah, so, that's around the same time I did too. Yeah, I probably wouldn't be, wouldn't even be streaming if it wasn't for this pandemic. So yeah. Okay, yeah. So yeah, interesting. Uh, I I started streaming for the same reason. Like mm -hmm. every all my work evaporated, and I you know fell into the void. And I was like, okay, I need structure and. This is something I've always kind of wanted to learn about, but I didn't have time. And so I was like, okay, this will be like part of like my weekly schedule and I'm going to learn about it. And it's been a journey. But what did that look like for you at the very beginning? Has your, how has your setup changed? What have you learned? Cause it's been almost a year. So, you know. Oh man. Uh, so first, damn, well, first I was trying to do Instagram. That's what I was trying to do first. A get, lot get of DJs stream on instagram a lot like i i remember i think dj nice was the one that really uh yeah d nice or whatever his name is yeah yeah, yeah that really um set the tone for that uh he, he exploded on instagram facts that's a fact and i i i i'm not gonna lie i was kind of not envious but i was like what like <laughs> not even a real dj i was like no nah, fuck that i can get on there and dj too like i know i can dj so i'm like no nah, fuck that i'm gonna get on there too so i get on there and i mean the first night i got on there it was great it was cool but i didn't have the correct audio for it um and um quickly found out because people started dropping out after a while so i was like oh shit, okay i gotta get this fixed so i got a go mixer um, and then I started streaming again, but I noticed people were, they would tune in for a little bit, but then they would still just like dip off. So I'm like, what am I doing wrong? I'm like, I got the lights, like, but I'm like, you know what? That's a lot for them to sit on their phone and look at you on their phone and not do anything on their phone. <laughs> oh, know? right. So, Cause you can't do anything else if that's taking you know, up your screen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, okay, what's the alternative? So. In comes junk food, right? Junk food, junk food to me is the sensei of this shit. He's taught me so much shit about about Twitch, like I, in OBS, like I wouldn't know what the fuck to do. Right? Oh yeah, it's been a journey. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, junk food goes, yo man, uh, you got a lap another laptop, right? I'm like, yeah. He goes, bro, let's get on Twitch, start building you a community over there. So I'm like, well, show me. So he shows me, I got my I got my work laptop. I knew my work laptop was like the best laptop that I had. And at this time I only had one Mac. So it was only the other thing that I could use. So I'm like, all right, cool. I'm gonna use this. Didn't really have any visuals. So I just started like downloading stuff off of like, you know, YouTube and stuff. And I started streaming and I got a lot of people to follow me from Instagram to come over to Twitch, but they don't really get on Twitch that much now, but I got a lot of people to follow me. So I'm like feeling good. I'm like, okay, cool. So I see junk food, not junk food, but I see one of my homies has a green screen. Uh, Natural High has a, had a green screen. And she would bring it over whenever she actually DJed with me. Okay. So, okay, well, fuck, I need to get me one of these. And um, that's when I really started liking this whole Twitch twitch thing because i'm like okay now i can really create a world around me that's not really around me but people are gonna feel this thing and the music so i want this music to match the feel that i have around me here mm -hmm. so that's whenever i really started getting into it and i've always wanted to make videos for my mixes um i make like a bunch of mixes i have like 100 plus mixes on soundcloud um but i've always wanted to like make videos for them and like put them on youtube or something like that and so I was like, okay, this is a good medium because like, even if, you know, they do copyright it and mute it, like, you know, after it's recorded or whatever, I can record it myself, keep it and do whatever with it. But furthermore, that I have a live audience that I'm still DJing to. And that honestly, like, that was what made me say, yo, like, okay, this is what you need to focus on. Even if you get back going to DJing outside, like, keep this going right here because this is the future this is what is going to be going on if something happens i don't know anything could happen we i didn't think it could be 15 degrees in dallas but 
is going to mess around and be that next week. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So who knows what's going to happen? But at the end of the day, I know I have another medium to come to if I can't go outside and I need to reach other people in some kind of way, whether it be just talking, DJing, whatever. I have another way to reach and, and touch people outside of just going out and walking down the street or something like that. I can do it by sending them a link. Right. So I think, yeah, I think Twitch is like definitely like Twitch is definitely like a savior of a lot of people's sanity right now. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, and I think, you know, it's people like you who kind of saw the shift and decided to do something about it. There's so many people, yeah. especially for the entertainment industry, service industry, so many of those just completely went away and people were like, uh, uh, what do I do? How do right. I navigate this? How do I continue to do what I love to do? And that's like figuring out a way to get online. And for you, that was streaming. And I think that that was like, I mean, very few people, well, a lot of creatives did do it, but a lot of creatives also did not do it. And right. uh, you just got to be agile. Like you said, you, you have no idea what's going to happen. And so because of that, has your following expanded into like new territories because of Twitch? When before oh. it was all offline and now it's kind of like, uh, I guess a mix of both. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, I have definitely, uh, I've made friends in other States. Um, um, I haven't really, I wouldn't say made friends with anybody outside the country yet like that. Well, I have not from Twitch, but from like my SoundCloud mixes. Um, but it's definitely, it is definitely grown. Um, it's like, I mean, I've met a whole group of people that I didn't know liked house music, number one. Um, and number two, I've just met a group of people that are more, that I know are more like me because if I have a theme about soccer or have the, the Thursday night Smackdown theme or, you know, whatever, you know, it's a house music, whatever. I know that those people are gravitating towards what I've put in the in the bio. If they don't know me, they're gravitating towards what I've put in the bio and and the uh, what do you call it, the tags. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. So, um, I, I I think I have a more more of an appreciation for people who really connect with me now than what than then um, because the, back then it was like okay, like they're here, but they're they like they like the fact that they're here. They they know the DJ and mm. you know they can come up on the stage or and be seen giving me dap or whatever and you know blah 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 blah. blah. Mm. But going into my Twitch and chilling in my Twitch and conversating and and you know throwing bits and subscribing or whatever like that showed me that shows me that you really care like you really care about me elevating in my craft. So I yeah that's. In my opinion, it's just it's my 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 following has grown, but my appreciation has grown for that as well. Okay, so, mm -hmm. um, so how have you found your your community? How have you built that? Like, what does that look like? Um, was it kind of like, oh, I'm just gonna throw stuff out there and see like who resonates with it? Um, mm -hmm. was it you know? was your niche like what you expected you know because uh, i feel like everybody's journey and, and finding their community and building their community on twitch is a bit different and yeah. uh, you've been doing it for a year now so yeah how did you how did you find your your niche or are you still are you still discovering it yeah i'm still low-key still discovering it honestly i think i think um because like i don't whenever i whenever i stream i don't have like you know, 70 or 80 people in a stream or anything like that. I'm still sitting down there with the 15, you know, the 15 people, 20 people, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I'm still growing for sure. But um, to, to figure out what keeps people, what makes people turn my notification on so that whenever I start streaming, they're like, oh, crap, let me go ahead and get on there and see what k is doing today. Um, but the way that I've I've actually been growing it, though, has been... Number one, tuning in to other people's streams and mm. figuring out who I actually, who, who do I like watching? And yeah. if I like watching those guys, then the people that are going to connect with, that I'm going to connect with on there, they're more than likely going to like what I'm doing as well. Right. So going into other people's streams, throwing bits, you know, of course, following them, subscribing to whoever I, who I really like, 
Um, oh, my goodness. Everybody wants to call me right now. Um, <laughs> like, literally, everybody is calling me right now. Um, um, hold on, let me tell her. Uh, so, God, I lost my train of thought that quick. I'm so oh, so, sorry. so uh, if you're if you're watching somebody that you like, more than likely, uh, you know what you put out there. If it's similar, people are gonna like vibe with you and gravitate to you, kind of a thing. Yes, yes, and so basically doing that, interacting with the chat and, and things of that nature. Um, and then after that, going and following those people on Instagram and Twitter as well, and SoundCloud if they're DJs as well. Uh, basically, you know, so that I can connect with them through words outside of just whenever we see each other in the chat. You know what I'm saying? So Discord as well. I just started really like understanding how important Discord is to Twitch and like what it can really do um, for, you know what I'm saying? For a streamer, you know what I'm saying? So um, and is that like hopping in different serve for people who are like learning? So hopping in different servers, being part of other communities, kind of like sharing the love, getting the love back, kind of a thing. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And so, uh, and also of course being able to, being able to promote yourself, being yeah. able to tell, hey, I got this mix, or hey, I'm streaming, doing this or whatever, you know. Throw you throw yourself in there. I mean, most people have. Uh, I'm pretty sure you have your like your sub rooms or whatever for like different things. Like, uh, I don't know, just jokes or you know, you know, cool videos or whatever, something like that. I don't know. Yeah. But, but, like, in my opinion, that is great because in the palm of your hand, you have access to all these things that people like. You have access to all these things that that you can discover. At, at any moment because people are interacting all the time on on discord mm -hmm. so i just think that th those things those things have helped me definitely yeah reach people that i never thought that i would reach like yeah. I, I met a person over in romania um last week and i was like holy crap like you're super cool would you like to come <laughs> come to my stream and they they came in brought some people through so it was cool nice nice yeah i think um, I thought I knew what the internet was and what it was capable of until I got <laughs> until I started streaming. I was like, mm, <laughs> "This is a yes. whole new world." <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Nice. So, what is your uh? Do you have something that you do to like bring your A game? So, let's say it's been a shit day and you got a stream scheduled and you're like how do i bring the energy how do i bring my a game how do i like do the damn thing when you may not be feeling it initially yeah um well first off i definitely get uh, a nice blunt or a joint rolled and smoke that that's mm -hmm. number one <laughs> um and if i don't have that of course then i'll just like smoke a cigarette outside or something like that but um, during my streams, if I feel myself like the energy being like kind of low, what I do every 30 minutes is something called shot o'clock. Okay. It may, not, it may not be a full shot, but it's a little bit of alcohol that I, I, I put, at least put a little bit of rum in there. Um, and which is rum every single time. That's my, my shot of choice. I love and, rum. You know, and every 30 minutes, I take a shot of rum. Okay. And that kind of helps me, number one, if, it, if I don't, you know, if I'm kind of, it burns, of course, not a burn, but, you know, kind of wakes you up a little bit, right? You take that shot and it's like, oh, shit, like, okay, uh, I'm up now. You know? <laughs> yeah. But, but also, like, it's just, I'm, of course, I'm not an alcoholic, but it's like, okay, you feel like you're back into the bar scene. Like, if I was at a yeah. bar, I would have, like, three or four rum and cokes every night. So, yeah. So yeah, eventually I would end up taking those four shots or whatever, right? But drinking those and having people take shots with me, yeah, and people typing in the chat, shot o'clock and things like that, that makes me feel the energy. That makes me be like, okay, people are like here with me. People are jamming out with me. We're all hitting this milestone of being in here for 30, another 30 minutes. Yeah. So that's, that's what I use. But also now junk food has given me a non-alcoholic thing, which is the yerba tea. I love the yerba tea. Have you heard of yerba tea? I've before? heard of it. I think I've had it like once or twice. Is oh, it man, is I... yerba mate? 
yeah, Yerba Mai or something. Something like Mai, yeah. Ma, I don't know, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, it like if you're doing it super traditional, there's like oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, Yerba, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I I definitely like one of the biggest influences on um like for bringing my A game would definitely be just like listening to music that I know is going to make me feel good. Like yeah. just know yeah. like the minute I hear this like like Respect by Aretha Franklin. If I blast that, I know I'm going to be walking into whatever I'm going to do with a whole yeah. different attitude than I had oh, before. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh well then in that case let me rephrase that answer my bad let me rephrase that answer so no but i also drink too to keep the party going so i i, I totally feel yeah. you yeah I, I i got you on that but yeah maybe like is there because a lot of performers have like maybe a ritual or i mean i say ritual but it's just something that they do right before they go on and they're like okay i'm like i'm gonna do like 50 jumping jacks or like for me i listen to music or you know uh I don't know. Do you have your thing? What's your thing before you turn on that camera so that you know what you're bring your you are bringing the energy you want to bring to the stream? Um, well, most times when I'm before I stream, I'm getting off of work, so yeah. that's the first time that I'm able to like really stand up and like stretch and be like, oh yes, like we're done. Mm -hmm. But honestly, like because because I have to kind of like get everything back set up again. And every every event has a different feel. I try different screens and stuff like that. So honestly, like setting up, that actually gets me excited. That like like okay, we're we're close to get we're close to that time. Like we're, yeah. And I know it's gonna sound bad. I, I don't like being late, but if I'm running late, like that definitely gets my adrenaline going because I'm mm. like okay, let me get this going. Like I need to hurry up and get this done. Like whatever, right? But. Whenever I'm getting like the visuals and I'm like, and I'm like, oh, I'm excited to play this and see what everybody reacts to this. Like last night, I finally got some like pyro or whatever for um, like, you know, like whenever the wrestlers come out, sometimes they have the pyro that goes off or whatever. Yeah. I finally got some like virtual pyro or whatever. So whenever somebody subscribes or something like that, I can have that go off. And so I was excited for like a freaking week. <laughs> to like have that shit go off you know and i had like a couple other screens so that like that honestly gets me like just to be able to like you know pre like you know premiere a new screen or like play some new music or like if a cool album came out i want to be like you know i want to show people like hey this is how i'm gonna mix this you know whatever like this is these are my favorite songs from this album so yeah like those are the kinds of things like i guess premiering stuff is like what gets me going for real, for real. Like being able to say, I can't wait to see what they think about this. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Nice. What's up, What the Truck? Welcome to the stream. Glad you're here. Glad you're here. Mm -hmm. uh, so, okay. Um, and what have you found has really helped you? So we talked about a little bit about Discord um, and, you know, how you go to uh, other streams and stuff. Um, what have you found has, because like every, every community has like, their inside jokes and what makes them feel like a family or like an online community. Like what have, what is, what have you done that's really helped to like keep your community, community there. So you're, you're good at bringing traffic in. Right. But like, how do you keep them there? And what have you noticed like people really vibe with and what works? Well, I just try to have a conversation with people, a light conversation, not, to, not to overpower the music. Um, but, I like conversation with them and, and a little bit of ridiculousness. Yeah. And when I say ridiculousness, like, of course, like, well, not of course, but I have a, I have a, an effect that I can put on a microphone so I can, you know, of course, like make the pitch high, low, or, you know, put an echo on it or whatever. And the main thing, I mean, you know, effects like, like for instance, like Kuma just typed good to go into the chat. Um, that's a that's a drop of mine that I use, um, and a, a lot of the people that of course know me in the in the in the personal like in, that have come to see me in person, they know about this drop. But a lot of people, whenever they come in to uh, 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 my Twitch, I have an emote that says "Good to Go." I have, um, um, of course, the the sound effect and all that kind of stuff. And so those things are what 
keep people there like my little my little sayings and stuff like me and junk food say you're a lot so whenever people come in the chat it's always a big you're you know everybody feels welcome everybody feels like we're all here to listen to some great music say whatever's on our mind because of course i wanted to keep to keep a, a open a open uh alleyway for people to, to to be themselves and that's that's really what it is is just letting people know hey man no matter who you are um i have a friend named aggie panda she they don't like to be called you know he or she mm -hmm. and so i had to get myself and my chat to understand no don't call them oh my god them, <laughs> it's all you good them, you don't call them that you you don't call them that it's either them or they you know what i'm saying so that's what it's been like just learning learning how people interact with each other and 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 really just incorporating that into the music too so uh just to keep uh just to keep it funny though there's one thing one new thing that has been keeping a lot of people united in my chat and that is toes there's been this new thing where people have admitted that they like toes that that is one thing that they make sure is a good thing on the person that they date man or woman and make sure they have great looking toes so that is one thing we just find a little random stuff like that you yeah know what I'm the shot o'clock yeah you know, the drops little shit like that you know that's what keeps that's what keeps people in my opinion in the chat the inside jokes yeah you know what i'm saying so, yeah, 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 yeah. And keeping it a safe space. Like, I can't tell you, like, how much I take protecting and my community and keeping it a safe place for people. Like, the minute yeah. some jackass gets on, I'm like, I'm punting you out of here. No, like, no warnings. Like, you read the chat rules. You ain't gonna, res right. you're not gonna respect it. Like, you're out. Like, like, because you are not worth like disrupting the vibe you know <laughs> right, right right i agree most definitely yeah I, I i definitely i've only had to ban one person um um and that's because they came in there dropping the end bomb mm. with the with the er and i was just like oh no this is not what we're doing so yeah. i was just like nope like i understand the music that i play drops that 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 word but we don't we don't tend to use that yeah in the chat <laughs> yeah so, yeah, but other than that, it's just been good vibes, man. I mean, you know, Aggie Panda has been really cool about uh, about people um, misusing her pronoun or whatever, their pronoun. Um, see, I, I did it again. Um, <laughs> We're all learning. We're all learning. It's all good. But yeah, but yeah, that's 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 just something that's learning. You know what I'm saying? That's that's what Twitch has taught me is learning different people in different areas of the world honestly yeah she, they're in canada like I, I didn't know i was going to meet anybody in canada this year like or last year you know so right. great it's been great yeah so how do you deal do you uh I, i'm curious because everybody has a different way of dealing with trolls first of all do you deal with a lot of trolls if uh, no. no okay if you do do you just um is it just like a Troll them back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, troll them back. If it unless it's something that's like super like racist or something yeah. like that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or like sexist or like you know anything like that, like I'll 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 troll them back because in my opinion, it's fun and games, fam. <laughs> I'm here for fun and games as well most times, unless it's like a chill R and B set and I want it to be like you know, hey man, I want it to be lowercase like junk food because I want it to be lowercase lowercase and all in the chat all chill vibes i'm not raising my voice at all like he tries to do that kind of shit right and it's just like unless it's something like that and you're trying to like be the one that disrupts everything like i'm gonna be like bro come on like yeah. for real come on i'm really trying to create something here like can you can you help a brother out you know what i mean but other than that like i will throw you back because it's all fun and games yeah and then, 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 as long as you don't as long as you don't mean real maliciousness behind it I'm gonna throw you back. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I feel that. Um, so, you know, let's say there's, you know, uh, somebody who's in their journey like you were 10 years ago. Let's say, you know, they're, they're younger. They're thinking about streaming. They're thinking about getting into DJing. You know, what, 
like I I always ask this, what are your like golden nuggets of it of advice as far as like what they should be doing and what they should be avoiding? Because it's one thing to be doing the right thing. It's also another thing to be avoiding stuff that you should not be doing. So uh, avoid comparing yourself to other DJs. Okay. Avoid comparing yourself to other DJs because there's always going to be somebody doing a gig that you want to do. There's <laughs> always going to be somebody doing a gig that you say, why didn't you book me for it? I could have did that. Meanwhile, you have another gig that you're doing in another hour or two or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So so that's the number one thing, in my opinion, to avoid. The number two thing to avoid is janky promoters. Get your deposits, fam. Like, get your deposits. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I can't stress that enough because... Even like even recently that I because of the pandemic and this guy hit me up last minute for to DJ. He's like, hey man, I really need you to DJ this gig. And I was just like, you know what, yo, I'll help you out. I'll show you love. Don't worry about the deposit. Just give me the bread once I get there. That's, yeah. I didn't get that money until last the last night. <laughs> oh, okay. And I, and I did that gig Saturday. Oh, to me, okay. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's a big no no because you told me that you were gonna have the money for me then. Yeah. You know so do you but, get like 50% up front now or do you get paid? How does that, how should mm -hmm. people navigate that? Unless, unless it's a bar, I get 50% up front. Now. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll say 50% or at least the first hour. Get your first hour's work. The first okay. hour's work is usually going to be like 75 or or $100. That's going to automatically pay for your gas. Yeah. Or if you, or if you miss any kind of money um, that you could have been booked for, it's going to put something in your pocket. So okay. all one hour. Yeah, I, uh, I've, I, I've never done, well, actually, no, I have, I've played set for, um, I, I sub and play set for people whose, like, drummer is either sick or out of town or whatever, um, yeah. but, uh, in regards to, like, freelance, I do a lot of freelance marketing, and I do the same thing, like, 50% up front. I have been, yeah. you, uh, there's no messing around here. <laughs> like you are not going to like take everything and leave kind of a thing. So yeah, yeah it's, it is important because you got to have some skin in the game. They have to have some sort of commitment. You know, there's got to, you got to, they got to take you seriously and people take you seriously when you start dealing with their bag. So, yeah. you know, yeah. you, yeah, you real. like, that is a huge, huge, huge piece of advice. I don't care if you're DJing, freelancing, any side hustle you got. Right. And it, unless it's like you're selling products or something, get half up front. If yeah. they're not, here's the thing. They're not willing to give you half up front. They're not serious or they're, they're trying serious. to mess around. Yeah. So right. like, yeah, wonderful, wonderful yep. advice. Um, yep. Okay, uh, and what would be, uh, we're going to be wrapping up, uh, what is like, I love asking people this, um, but what is like your constant either motto in life or a quote you go back to or mindset you go back to, like, no matter how things are, like, either horrible, good, whatever it is, what is that constant mindset that you have that you like, or a mantra or whatever, that you always touch base with? Um. Bad times don't always last. Yeah. Bad times don't always last. Like, yeah. and I think that's the number one thing for me because, um, especially recently, recently I've had to to really say that to myself a lot. Uh, I lost my dad in in August. Oh, of sorry. Last year. Um, it's all good. Um, I realized that that's the best thing that could have happened because I didn't realize how sick he was. He didn't. He wasn't telling anybody. Mm. So. <laughs> But um, just realizing that bad times don't always last, bro. So if you're broke or, you know, say you ain't got no bread right now or, you know, say you ain't, you know, you don't, you don't, you're not where you want to be in your, in your career, but you're working towards it or whatever, keep working. You know what I'm saying? Keep working, but work smart while working hard. You work yeah. smart and hard, and hard. There's no way. There's no way that you can lose. Yeah. There's no way that you can lose if you work smart and hard. Yeah. Yeah. Just keep grinding. Keep yep. grinding. Uh, yeah. So what the truck? Yes, this uh, this is DJ Kmore. He is a, a DJ in Dallas and here on Twitch. Uh, check out his link tree. Uh, and Marvin, yes, this is a podcast. This is my second episode where I just uh, I'm highlighting fellow streamers um, and uh, 
just talking about what they're doing and, and getting their stuff out there. Um, I'm going to put the link here again. And, uh, uh, yeah, where, so, uh, let us know, like, where can we find you, DJ Kmore? What do you have, uh, on deck as far as like streaming and stuff? Um, I put the link tree there, but let us know what you've got, um, you know, coming up as far as streams and stuff. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I have, um, uh... This weekend, I'm going to probably stream like every day, every day. Nice. So um, tonight, I'll probably stream around like eight o'clock tonight. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to do probably stream uh, some morning stuff. I don't know. But it, my schedule for like this weekend is going to fluctuate. So I'll just say like put your notifications on for me. Um, because this is, I, usually on the weekends, I'm out DJing in the bar. That's mm. usually i'm djing out there um but mondays mondays um mondays i'm gonna be djing at 6 p.m tuesdays i do shake and bake with junk food on his page so it's junk food dj um and uh, definitely follow him as well he's he's crazy um wednesdays i dj at 6 p.m and thursdays i dj at 8 p.m okay nice Awesome. Yep. Dope. All right. Well, uh, thank you again for hanging out with me. Just let me interview you and host you. Um, you know, I love like check out. I, I don't know why. I, I And I don't know if it's it's just extremely entertaining to see the wrestling with the music. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but there's something about it where I'm just like, I love this. I just love yeah. this. It's so, so good. Um, so, yeah, check out his Instagram. He's got a SoundCloud. He streams here on Twitch. Like, check him out. Follow. Do all the things. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we'll wrap it up here, and then we'll close out in, um, separately on, on Discord cord um but thanks for hanging out guys this episode will be on my youtube later on today if there was anything that um you know you felt like you missed out on people can always uh uh oh thanks thanks dj okay, yeah all good all good uh and this is gonna be up on youtube so that you can see the whole thing uh you know later on um and until then you know i'll i'll catch you soon okay bye guys peace